them because scientists say in the far, far distant past, we humans developed on the same path as gorillas and other primates. And then we split away to become slightly different animals. They live in the wild, but there aren't many of them left because we are cutting down the forest and taking up so much space, we are squeezing them out of their homes. But that's not right. It's not right and it's not fair. I wish I could meet these creatures, but they live in rainforests. Did you say? Is that far away? Well, I happen to know people who know someone who works in the second largest rainforest in the world. We are learning every day. Hi, my name is Tendo, and I'm his brother Indigo. Our mom is a wildlife vet, and she specializes in gorillas the mountain gorillas you may have heard or seen on TV. She wants to protect them from diseases and also from people who may want to harm them. Poachers! It's a very important job because there are only 1,063 gorillas left in the wild, and 460 of them are here in Bwindi Impenetrable Forest in Uganda. That's where we've been coming since we were babies, and we have made lots of friends here. On this trip, we're surprising two of them, Briona and Deus, and taking them along on a mountain gorilla tracking adventure. Wow! You can track gorillas if you're 15 or older. I'm not old enough yet, but I can still learn about them in the laboratory where my mom works. Science, you and me. Why did you decide to work with the gorillas? I decided to work with gorillas because I felt that they were very few in number, and we needed to protect them. They're very charismatic intelligent and they do many things that we do. There's a gorilla which learned how to sign, to do sign language. It's called Coco. They taught her how to communicate with humans using sign language. Love you. Love you. Love you. Visit love. There are rumors going around that apes in general uh, are really dangerous. It's very rare for gorillas to harm someone because they're generally gentle giants and they'd rather not. But they're very, very strong. They have five times the strength of a human being. Whoa. It's a really amazing experience when you get to Why see them. Why do you have to be 15 to see the gorillas? Children have childhood diseases, like measles, mumps, and those diseases can be passed on to the gorillas. We share over 98% genetic material and can make each other sick. Wait, what does Indigo's mother mean when she says we share 98% of our genetic material with gorillas? Dr. Gladys means we are made from the same stuff. How though? They don't look like us. They are covered in hair. Their skin looks really tough and they're huge. We don't look the same from the outside, but we are made from the same stuff on the inside at microscopic level, which is really, really small. 
that small stuff is our DNA, DNA. <laughs> which is another way of saying information. Every living creature, from bacteria to gorillas, is made up of this information. And that information creates differences and similarities between us. So we are different on the outside, mm -hmm. but not so much on the inside. Exactly. That means gorillas can catch the same sicknesses that we have, like colds and flus. So we should give them space. And if you think about it, protecting them from our germs is just good manners, really. But let's go back to the forest. I want to find out more about them. Let's go! Let's go! We are learning every day. This is a map of Bwindi, impenetrable forest. There's over 20 habituated gorilla groups. Is this where exactly all the groups are? Or it's just an estimation? It's just an estimation, because the gorillas move a lot yeah. every day. Yeah. This one may be here, next time here. Yes. And we are going for Rushegura uh, group. This Shebura group has around 19 individuals. That's a really big family. The leader of the group is an alpha male. He has silver hair on his back, and that's why he's called Silverback. What's interesting is that this group has two Silverbacks, which is rare, as they normally fight. Gorilla babies were born last year in the Rushegura group. Hopefully, we'll meet them today. It's going to be a long and difficult hike, so walking sticks will come handy. What's the meaning of habituated? Habituated means getting them used to you. So when you first go to see gorillas, and they are completely wild, they're about like 100 meters away, and then they shrink back into the bushes. So you have to go up to them, they start charging at 100, then 95, then 90. Every single day they charge at a shorter distance until you get them to five meters and they've stopped charging. Then you know that they're ready for, to be seen and habituated for tourism. How long does that take? It takes about two years. Oof, that's really For long. one group? For one group, yeah. What happens if you don't track them for a week? It's very difficult to find them. Actually, once you habituate a gorilla group, you, you are committed to following it every single day for the rest of its life. Woo! 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 We can uh, know the grass are close to us by hearing their chest beating, okay. as well as smelling them. But it, it, they smell, especially when they are fighting, uh, it, it smells nasty. It's not a good smell, because yeah. they fight a lot because of too much food. Yeah. Three hours hiking up, there was no sign of gorillas yet. And all of a sudden... This is a gorilla nest. Every day they make a new nest, a new bed, and they sleep in it. And the mom normally sleeps with the baby until the baby's about four years old when the baby's old enough to build its nest. It means we're on the right track. That's how rangers find gorillas every day. They look for the night nests first, and then they can see which direction the gorillas move. And when they are waking up in the morning, they leave the poop. And this poop helps us when we are counting to know how many individuals are in the group. So being a wildlife scientist means to work with poop a lot. Mom calls it the fecal sample. And fecal samples can say so much about the gorillas, their group structure, and of course if they are okay or sick. I saw some blood stain in the feces of a gorilla. This is very serious. We have to take a sample now. Well, that may be an indication of an infection. So what happens if you do not take the test? If you don't take the test, then you may miss a disease. And this gorilla will get sick and others, it may make others sick. We're doing lots of important scientific work on the way to make sure the gorillas are healthy. Gorillas always build nests very close to one another. One more here. Are you found hair? This hair silver. is for silverback. Okay. Yeah, yeah this, there are two silverbacks in this group. Yeah. One of them is called Kabukojo, who's the lead silverback. Yeah. And the second one is called Kalembezi. Yeah. So this could, I, could be for either one of them, who hopefully we'll see today. Yeah. It looks like finally we're very close to the gorillas. The forest became so dense. Forget the trail. We have to go straight through the bushes. Those who are going close to gorillas are changing to different types of masks. We're so closely related to gorillas, we can easily make them sick, so we have to be very, very, very careful. Especially now, because COVID, coronavirus, is very, very contagious. 
We want to be extra sure that the gorillas are safe. Come this side, Sorori. The leader of the group himself, Silverback Kabukojo, is meeting us first. He has to check that we're not dangerous before he can let us meet his family. They're always with their children. They never let them go. They make sure that they're protecting them all the time. They move with them everywhere. And also they space their children four and a half years so that by the time they have the next one, the other one is fully independent and can look after itself. How does the mother take care of the babies? Yeah, the moms are very motherly. They hold on to the baby and they're extremely protective over their young ones. The baby is so adorable. Yeah. In the future, she will become friendly because she likes praying. The father is taking care of the child while mom decided to climb on the tree. Silverbacks are very good fathers. They look after the babies. We've had cases where the mother disappears. We don't know where she's gone. And the father looks after the baby. Wow. Mm. Why do they climb on trees? Because he's going to get something to eat that's up in the tree that he can't get down. Yeah. yeah. Other members of the group are also still enjoying their meals. Do you know that gorillas spend most of their day eating? Why does it eating stems instead of leaves? Because it also gets moisture from the stem. Like kind of water. So over here we have Kanywanyi. Okay. He's a big black buck. Um, he's the third oldest in the group among the males, and he's soon going to silver. What? <clears throat> that sound just means that the gorilla is warning us that he's here, yeah. and we have to be careful not to get too close. Mm -hmm. When he's doing his lips, mm -hmm. Don't think of cheating your chest, because what happens if you hit your chest in front of a gorilla? You need to want to fight. Exactly. You're trying to say, I'm also strong. Hello, kids. If you want to do well in school, you have to stay active and fit. Do you want to practice with me? Let's go. Today, I will show you a few exercises that will make your body stronger so that you can hike in the mountains and forests. Chuma chuma! So kids, let's do this. We go side, side, jump, down and down. Side, side, jump, down and down. Again, side, side and jump, down and down. Side one last time, side and jump, down and down. Now let's roll up and down, up and down, up and down. One last time, up and down and stop. I think we can do this one last time. Let's try. Remember, we go side, side, jump, down and down. Again, side, side, Jump, down, and down. Again, side, side, and jump, down, and down. One last time, side, and side, and jump, down, and down. Let's roll our hands over, up, and down. Up, and down. Up, down. Up, down, good. Up, and down, quick. Up, and down. Up on the side and down and stop. Nice! Exercise every day, you will feel and think much better.
Wow, look at that baby gorilla. It looks unusual. This baby is the mother of this baby is called Chibande. She's an old female, and we wonder why the baby is losing hair, because it was born brown, but in the recent past few weeks, the baby has started to lose hair. So we're concerned about that. The baby's really losing weight. It's still hanging on and breastfeeding, but the fact that it's losing hair is not good. And we don't know how it's going to survive in this cold forest of windy. We're just hoping that the, the hair will grow back. The mum is old, so it could be due to malnutrition. So that's something we're very concerned about. Every single time you see something new, it's so magical being with gorillas, isn't it? Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah, it's a once in a lifetime experience. <laughs> Bye, gorillas! Bye, gorillas! That was really fantastic! Tendo and Indigo's mom had a brilliant job! A wildlife vet! That's definitely something to consider doing in future. Imagine! Hanging out with silverbacks, watching the babies play, and making sure they're safe. Well, I'm not sure you can hang out with a silverback. He might not like it if you're in his business too much. But I know what you mean. Just being in the same space as them looks amazing. Why do some people behave as if we have more rights to this art than gorillas do? People who say that are talking poo. We should respect the rights of gorillas to be here. Yep. And speaking of pool... Now, finally, something I can participate in. Analyzing the poop. Oops, I mean the fecal samples. Today we've collected how many samples from the gorillas? Yes. Yes. We label them to identify the sample. First, we have to put the numbers on these sample jars. Then we register it all in a lab book date the place we found the sample, in our case nest, and start as SB for silverback, ADF for adult female, and so on. Ah, silverback. Yeah. <laughs> With these samples, some of it is going to be used for looking under the microscope for parasites, worms, worm eggs. Another part of it is going to be preserved, and then it's put in the freezer over there. From there, we'll be able to diagnose if there's COVID in the sample. How are parasites different from virus? The parasites are a bit bigger, yeah. you know, under the microscope. Viruses are very difficult to detect. You need a very, very, very high power microscope okay. to see a virus. Okay, so but they, they react in different ways in the body. Yeah, the parasites can cause certain diseases and the viruses can cause certain diseases. What is the most dangerous virus in gorillas? Currently, the most dangerous virus is SARS-CoV-2, which causes COVID-19, the coronavirus. Whoa. <laughs> what do you see under the microscope, Tendo? I see some clear circles. I see like five brown stuff. I'm not sure if they're parasites, but it looks like it's healthy. Those round dots are actually like air bubbles. Mm, there's, there's no parasite, eh? Wow, that's yeah. good news. Good news, this good gorilla news. is healthy. Science is really cool, isn't it? Discovering things under the microscope. Yeah. By the way, you can't just come and give giant gorillas medicine. You have to use dart guns. That's why scientists like our mom had to train how to aim. She's a pretty good sniper. Because you can't touch them, they're wild animals, so you have to do it from a distance. You have to be good at aiming, yeah. It took me a while to get that good. You aim for a place where the, there's a lot of muscle, like the thigh. And here we were getting ready to dart a gorilla. And that's how you do it. And you, they're so clever that if they see you pointing a dart gun at them, they run away. So you have to hide it and then take it out at the last moment. Let's go. Let's go. Now it's time to prepare our samples for sending them to the main lab where they can be tested for viruses, especially COVID-19. Well done, everybody. Wow. Wow. 
Is this all gorilla poo poo? This is all gorilla poo poo. What? Wow. <laughs> How old are these samples? Like 60 years old? Nah. The oldest sample is about 10 years old. Wow. Because we've been doing this work for a very long time. Buy sample, see you in 10 years. <laughs> Let's take a moment to slow down and focus. Taking some time to pause is good for us to help us stay calm. Gorillas live in large family groups. Maybe you have a big family too, or maybe you have a group of friends at school that feels like family. Our family can also be our neighbors or our teachers. We're going to think about our family and practice kind thoughts. First of all, Choose one of your family that you'd like to send kind thoughts to. What kind thoughts would you like to send? Perhaps you'd like them to have a nice day. Perhaps you hope they do well at the test or interview that they have. Perhaps you hope that they have a nice yummy meal. Or perhaps you hope that they get a good night's sleep so they're well rested for the day ahead. It's nice to take a moment to send kind thoughts to someone and maybe right now, someone is thinking kind thoughts about you too. Why do we need to protect the gorillas? Because there's so few in number. There's only about 460 in Brindi and over just over 1,000 mountain gorillas in the world. So we have to do whatever we can to protect them. They're very important. They're very closely related to us. Also the forest where they live, when we protect gorillas, we're protecting all the other animals in the forest. We remove one animal, you disrupt the whole ecosystem because they all depend on each other. And the gorillas, when they, when they defecate, they provide very important dispersal of different seeds that they eat. And then these seeds keep growing all over the forest. So if you no longer have gorillas, we may lose these plants, you know, very important plants which are good for us. Why are there only a thousand gorillas left in the wild? The forests have been cut down where they used to live. That's the biggest reason why there are very few gorillas. But then another reason is this poaching. People poach other animals in the forest and the gorillas accidentally get snared. But poachers themselves can get into a trap, a camera trap. Still cameras in the forest aiming at recording poachers as well as elusive or shy animals that we may not ordinarily or commonly see. The rangers took us on a mission to set up new camera traps. We go for this tree. But the other one doesn't have the things for covering it. Oh, yeah. So we'll, face, we'll put it facing the trail. Yeah, I'm going to turn it on. Yeah. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. So what are you setting it for? Footage capture, of gorillas, capture. To capture the footage of it. Is it locked? Then you lock it with the key. Cover it so no one can see it. Yeah, I've covered it. Make sure you don't block the camera with this one. Yeah. And there we go. Camera trap is set. Mm -hmm. So your job is very important, right? Yes, it is. Why do you think it's important? Uh, because it helps the gorillas to, to stay alive. My hopes are that the numbers of gorillas will continue to grow. And the problem is we don't have enough space for them. So we're trying to raise funds to expand their habitat so that there's enough space for them. Because right now they come outside into people's gardens and people get annoyed. They eat people's banana plants, then they get, pick up diseases and they destroy people's livelihoods. But if there's enough space, then there's less conflict with the communities. Well, if you expand their habitat, wouldn't it be harder and longer to track them? It will be harder and longer to track them. Sorry, Indigo. So you might have to live <laughs> in the forest sometimes. <laughs> Allow me to congratulate you upon the success of Gorilla Tracking. We give you a Gorilla Tracking certificate. We're learning every day. In a fair fight between human beings and gorillas, we would lose. They are so strong. Hey, 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 watch it. Let's not have a fighting talk. <laughs> We need to live together in harmony. I know, I know. I wasn't being serious. It is serious though. We must stop conflict with them. They need more room to live in. 
We must stop the pushers from killing them and we have to stop cutting down the forest they need to live in. We depend on the rainforests that they clear to create fresh air for us to breathe in. If we destroy the forest, they won't survive. And in the end, we won't survive either. I really like gorillas. They are peaceful, mm -hmm. but not to be messed with. Did you know the babies make their own beds? So they are definitely not like you then. Maybe not like that, but if you think about it, mm -hmm. we need the same things. Safety, mm -hmm. family, and food. So we must try harder to preserve the forest. We must try harder to keep the gorillas safe, because if you really think about it, they're saving us. <laughs> I agree. So let's ask, let's learn, and let's love. And don't forget to make it fun! Are you enjoying Engine? Post your comments on our Facebook or Instagram page at Engine TV Africa. Has the show changed the way you look at science, the way you approach learning, the way you see the world around you? Let us know and you might be invited to appear on the show.